Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to give you guys the video that you've all been waiting for in this series. My favourite two exercises for calves. I'm going to share with you what those exercises are and I'll teach you why I think just about everybody should be incorporating them in some shape or form into their workouts. I'll also take you into the gym and show you a few different variations on these exercises and how to perform them to get as much as you can out of your calf training. Now I'm also going to throw some timestamps into the pinned comments below and there's also going to be a segmented progress bar down here for you to jump ahead to wherever you want. But first, I do need to hijack this video with an extremely important message that will help you more than any other piece of content I could ever make on body parts and different exercises for those body parts. And it's all going to start with addressing the biggest criticism or comment or question that I get around calf training, which is whether or not you can grow calves or if it really does all come down to genetics. Now, I'll be honest with you, regardless of how closely you follow everything I teach you in this video or other videos that I've done on calves in the past, chances are for the majority of you out there, your calves won't end up looking like mine because you don't have my genetics. But let's unpack that a little bit. What really goes into the genetics of calves? The most prominent thing is the muscle belly insertion point. As you can see on my calves, my calves, my calves insert very low down onto my ankle. Whereas if you were to contrast this with somebody else, you can see how other people's calves may insert a lot higher up onto the leg. And this is what we're really talking about when we talk genetics. We're talking about where the muscle belly itself attaches onto the body. And that will definitely have an impact on the overall look of your calves. But I see that as a bit of a weak excuse that people give when it comes to calf training. Because you can make the exact same argument about any body parts, whether it's your biceps or your hamstrings or your quads or your triceps or your shoulders. Every single body part is going to have some genetic factors playing into the overall architecture of the muscle and where it attaches on your body and how it looks overall. Now, it's a little bit more prominent on areas like maybe your biceps or your calves, but the fact still remains that it's all the same type of tissue, muscle tissue. And as such, it responds in the exact same way in terms of growth, provided you give it the right stimulus. It's a lot easier to just make the excuse of genetics getting in the way of being able to grow calves. And yes, your calves may never look the same as mine, and you might even have a harder time growing them due to things like tendon stiffness at the Achilles tendon, but overall, the same principles apply to building muscle, and you definitely can improve the size of your calves over time by using the right exercises, setting them up correctly, and executing them properly consistently over a long period of time, which is exactly what this video is going to get into. And that's another really important point that I really want to address in this video and something that goes a little bit beyond just this video. But unfortunately, with the way that YouTube and other social medias work, it really is all about grabbing attention. So of course, you're going to see me or every other content creator out there posting up photos or videos that are appealing and enticing for you to want to learn more. I'll bet that a lot of you are here right now because you saw the cover photo of my calves and thought, yeah, there's some big calves. Maybe if I watch this video, I'll finally unlock the secret to calves or something like that. But that's where we need to change our mentality a little bit. I personally believe that you shouldn't formulate your opinions and make decisions based solely upon the results, the testimonials or the talents that are being thrown your way, including my own. It's very easy to look at somebody and say, yeah, they've got a really well-developed body. They must clearly know how to get that result. But as I'm sure many of you are aware, that is simply not the case. There are many factors that play into results, whether it's from genetics, history of training, Photoshop, lifestyles, or even things like performance enhancements that can skew the results overall. So instead of purely judging the merit of a technique or a method or a training system based upon the result, I urge you to look into the system behind it all. That is why I always do my absolute best to give the extra detail on how this stuff works in the body and why I think it's important. It would be a lot easier for me to just say, hey, look, do these exercises because it worked for me and I've got really well-developed calves, but it doesn't really give you a complete understanding or help you in any meaningful way long-term. 
So instead, if I give you a clear reasoning as to why I think these movements fit so well into ticking all the boxes required for building muscle mass for the calves or any other body parts, hopefully it helps you make better decisions long term instead of simply following things blindly. I get it. So many people are going to be like, oh, look, you talk so much, Eugene, just get to the point. And that's why I do things like timestamps or these progress bars for your convenience. But I also hope that many of you guys actually care about not just training your body, but on improving and getting better over time. Whether you're a professional in this industry or not, I think this is an important life skill to always be striving to be your absolute best. So anyway, side rant is now over. Hopefully that message resonates with you or that you've just stuck, skipped over it if you didn't. I'm going to get stuck straight into the core of this video now with my favorite two exercises for calves. But first, as always, drop me a comment below and let me know what your favorite two calf exercises are. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do that whilst I sip on my tea. Please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well because those small actions on your part really do help this channel grow, which means I can keep pumping out all the free content just like this for you guys. So it is all very, very, very much appreciated. All right, so exercise number one is the single leg standing dumbbell calf raise. This is a truly humbling exercise that surprises many people when they try to do it. And that is the number one reason why I'm such a big fan of it. There are many people out there who I see stacking on a load of weight onto the typical calf raise machines and repping out with all sorts of momentum and cheating who can't even get through a single set of bodyweight single leg standing calf raises without even any extra load. So this exercise will reveal a lot of weaknesses within your body and highlight to you just how much you've been potentially shortchanging your results with calf training. The best part is you don't need to use a ton of weight at all for it to be effective. With the single leg standing calf raise, the moment you start using too much speed or momentum, you will start to lose balance and fall over, which will be an indication to you that you're doing things incorrectly. If you stick with good technique, you'll be surprised how much this crushes you overall. Now, I'm pretty sure it is next to impossible to do a full range rep like this, balancing your entire body weight on just one leg. So it is fine to use some sort of assistance for balance, but you'll know for yourself when you're starting to rely too heavily on it and are cheating your way out of more stimulus in your calves by pulling yourself up with your arm or your torso. So a simple set of 10 to 15 reps with a controlled lowering and a pause in both the stretch and the contraction is often more than enough to crush even the most advanced bodybuilder who claims to have tried everything to build their calves. Oftentimes, I won't even be doing these in the gym due to the low external weight requirements. These can very easily be slotted in at home on a staircase or any kind of elevation for a few sets. From a setup and execution perspective, try to keep an even pressure through the entire foot, not emphasizing rolling in more towards the inside or the outside of the foot. You can also play with varying degrees of knee flexion or a bend in the knee to hit a little bit more in the soleus, which is the deeper calf muscle that plays an important role for maintaining upright posture and for walking and running. I usually do at least one variation of these each week in my training with either a straight or a bent knee. So when I perform these or any type of calf raise, I like to pause in the stretch position for a minimum of three seconds to help eliminate any tendency to bounce. The Achilles tendon is the thickest tendon in the body and is extremely powerful and is capable of absorbing and rebounding a lot of force. So by spending a bit more time in the stretch position under static tension, we are loading the tendon isometrically, which may create changes in the stiffness of the tendon, which might decrease the risk of injuries to the calves and Achilles tendon long term. Now, I'm not really sure if this will help a lot with muscle building per se, but anecdotally, I have found it to help significantly with ankle mobility and with the overall quality of a calf workout and the results in your calves long term. Now, in any case, I'm pretty sure it's not going to hurt. And if anything, it's increasing the overall time under tension for the calves, which is probably going to be a good thing for your calf stimulus. 
Okay, so that's exercise number one. Exercise number two is a tibialis raise. I'm going to speak more broadly here and say anything for the tibialis anterior or the muscle in the front of your shin is going to be useful. So I'm going to slot in a few of my different favorite exercises here for you to play with. You can go as complicated as you like, adding in things like bands or cables, but you probably find that body weight is more than enough as the muscle tends to be an extremely undertrained region. From a muscle building perspective, the tibialis anterior isn't really going to grow a huge amount disproportionately to the rest of your body, as there simply isn't much room to have muscle there. But I do think it's an important muscle to be training that gets overlooked more so from an overall mechanics point of view, which is why I'm including it here. This muscle plays a lot of important roles for maintaining posture when walking and standing up, and for overall movements at the ankle joints. Better strength, endurance, and coordination through this muscle and its associated actions will carry over very well to all of your other calf exercises, particularly the single leg standing calf race due to the roles it plays in stabilizing the ankle joints. So I see this as a really useful accessory movement that will help you get more out of your calf training with the added benefit of slowly adding size to the front of your shin. Probably the simplest variation is to simply do toe taps or toe raises, which were a very popular exercise decades ago that I used to see a lot in sports specific programming for track and field athletes. All you need to do is position yourself up against a wall for balance and to give your ankle a bit more range of motion and focus on pulling your toes up towards your shins. Similarly to the calf raise, a set of 15 here with a conscious pause in the peak contraction will give you a surprisingly big amount of blood flow and fatigue to the lower leg. These pair really well with the standing calf raise. One of my favorite things to do is to perform these toe raises as an active rest period between sets of calf raises. The amount of blood that will rush to your lower leg within a few sets is absolutely ridiculous and it'll be pretty hard to walk for a while after that. Give it a shot the next time you're training or even do it at home. All you need is about maybe five to 10 minutes to bust out a few sets really quickly. So there you go guys, my two favorite exercises for calves. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you're still here, thank you very, very, very much for watching it all the way through and I'll see you all next time. Oh, that's it, done. Two best exercise series completely finished. I don't know what we're gonna do anymore. Maybe that's it for YouTube. Maybe it's time to retire. Maybe I'll just do videos of me drinking tea now. Hair care tips. This is now gonna be a hair care channel. Welcome back guys. Today we're gonna to go through my top three moves to condition your hair. I like that. Yeah, good ring to it. See you all next time.